Well, bank earnings season has begun. We talked about Scotiabank's results yesterday and some modest profit growth. Is that the tone that we will see for the rest of the sector? Let's get more perspective on what's happening. John Aiken is the director of Canadian Financials Research at Barclays and uh, joins us in the middle of earnings season to sort of break it all down. I guess if you had one takeaway from Scotia and maybe what message it sends about bank earnings season, what would it be? Well, absolutely. And it's actually, I think it's a message that didn't that got lost in the noise mm. yesterday because the focus on Scotia is obviously the international platform. But what really stood out for us in terms of a lateral for the rest of the group is actually the growth that we saw in residential mortgages within Canada. Now, we did see margin compression within the Canadian retail franchise, which is not terribly surprising, but we actually saw the strongest growth in residential mortgages coming out of Scotia that we have seen in, in a long time. Year over year, it's still running about 5%, but from last quarter, it was up over 2%. And, that, and if you extrapolate that out, that's exceptionally strong growth and strong we've seen in the past. And we do think, with based on what we've, what we've been seeing in terms of the data on housing, this actually may be a lateral that, that moves across the group and we, we probably could see stronger loan growth than what was originally anticipated coming in coming into the quarter. What do you, what do you think it is? Uh, we, we, we've moved from a conversation a couple of years ago people were really concerned about the bank exposure to the to, to the mortgage market and, and what was happening with housing. What has changed? Well I, I think that first of all considering that we've come out of the, you know, the last 10 years of the financial crisis it really did not have any credit implications from domestic uh, credit particularly on the retail side that investors have become much more comfortable with the risk that the banks are putting on with residential mortgages. As well, in context, we're actually seeing lower uh, personal borrowing levels, and it's actually dragged down to the low mid single digit level, and that's been a little bit too slow growth from what, what investors would like to see. With this bounce back, I think that um, it's actually going to buoy uh, confidence, buoy the outlook, and potentially um, make the, the banks look a little bit better than what we had originally anticipated from next year in 2020. Okay, and, and when you're talking about the mortgage portfolios, do you get a sense, I'm not sure how extensive extensively the banks break it down, uh, but you think about <clears throat> markets like Toronto and Vancouver, which there were some fears out there for a period of time, but we seem to be getting back to healthy demand for housing. You've seen it in Montreal. It's not mm -hmm. even across the country, but do you, do you get a sense on where this mortgage activity is happening for the banks? No, absolutely. I mean, we're, we're going back to um, the hot spots. Vancouver, not as much. I mean, it's still in a bit of a downdraft, but it's mainly on the higher end of the spectrum. The GTA, though, has, has come back, both in terms of volumes and just some moderate price increases. And I think that's building confidence, not just in terms of potential borrowers, but also those that are in the housing market to, in general. To your point, we've seen growth in other areas. Montreal, which has been lagging in terms of price appreciation for a very long time, and we're actually seeing um, very strong growth in, in Quebec, not just on the housing market, but the uh, the provincial economy as well, largely predicated on the fact that the government spend on infrastructure mm. is propelling that forward. We are seeing some movement in BC, Vancouver in particular, and you know when we take a look at the uh, the oil, con uh, oil provinces, obviously Calgary, Alberta is not doing as well, but also have not fallen on a cliff, which has helps uh, boy confidence in the outlook. So I just want to circle back to, to your early thesis. We've got more banks to report uh, earnings. The idea that traditional banking in Canada, it doesn't grow that much. Hmm. Um, certainly on the capital market side, things have been fairly choppy for, for everybody on both sides of the border. Mm -hmm. that, that a number of Canadian banks are, are going to be perhaps leaning a little bit more heavily on their residential mortgage business to, to get some growth? To get some growth within Canada. But when you take a look at what the outlook is, particularly in terms of the Canadian GDP growth in context of the G7, investors and the banks themselves are still expecting stronger growth outside of Canada. Mm. You could have some markets, and like I said, the residential mortgage, um, you know, I'm not pounding the table saying we're going to see 10% uh, growth in, in, uh, in uh, residential mortgages, but honestly, the 3-4% that's being priced in right now may actually end up being a little bit low. You know, it's interesting you're saying this. We just talked about GDP in the U.S., mm -hmm. and we spoke to a, a strategist in New York who feel, when I asked him about Canada, he, he seems pretty convinced that the Bank of Canada is going to have to cut rates at least a couple of times next year. He was suggesting maybe as many as four times. So what do you think that means for mortgages in the housing market, mm -hmm. hypothetically, yeah. if we see a cooling of the Canadian economy heading into 2020. Yeah, I mean, well, the immediate impact of a rate cut is then because borrowing costs come down, uh, it costs you less to, to, to make, the, make the acquisition, and that could potentially fuel uh, additional volume, additional price increases. But that's in isolation. If the Bank of Canada is cutting rates, it, it's because they have an outlook for the economic growth not being as strong as what they're currently forecasting. And in that context, if economic growth is not as strong, uh, um, homeowners or potential homeowners may not
be as willing to buy. So it becomes a, uh, a pull, pull push type scenario. And I do want to get to some of your ratings on the banks. But before we get there, because you, you, you started the conversation talking about the mortgage market, let's not forget when you look at financials as an investment category in Canada this year, we've been talking about names like Home Capital and Equitable Group, mm -hmm. which have seen this huge move higher because there is a need for people to go out and get mortgages, especially with the mortgage stress tests in place. And they've had huge demand for their business, yes. which has really helped those stocks. It's been pretty incredible. To no, watch. absolutely. And, and what it does is just shows the bifurcation in the marketplace where the Canadian banks, when they're lending, uh, particularly in residential mortgages, it really is truly prime uh, borrowing. Now, when you take a look at some of the uh, monoline lenders, they do have prime borrowing, but they have subprime, but Canadian subprime context, not U.S. subprime context. And it's basically borrowers that don't fit into the Canadian bank boxes uh, might have volatility in their income stream, but still have uh, still have good jobs, could be business owners, stuff like that, that the banks just, they, they think that's too much risk, but the monoline lenders are willing to pick that up. And we've seen given confidence in what's the outlook for uh, residential mortgages, investors are, are definitely recognizing that it's not as risky as they would once perceived, call it two years ago. All right. Um, Scotia, just getting back to the company that let off earnings this year, stock still up close to 15% for, for 2019. That's at mm -hmm. the lower end of the, of, the, of the larger group. At the top, you see National and Laurentian gains between 25 30%. But I would say on average, you know, the big Canadian banks between 15 and 20% stock performance this year. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at your outlook over the next 12 months. This is a group where at the very least you see some, some continued modest gains for the stock prices. Yeah. I mean, if you look at the, um, with the earnings season in the fourth quarter, the market and ourselves are going to reset our expectations for growth is going to be in 2020. But, you know, we don't anticipate wild swings in that outlook. So the, the growth expectations for the banks are about 5% on earnings. Depending if we get buyback, you might be able to, to goose that up by 100 basis points or so. But in context right now, that's actually decent growth when you're looking at where the Canadian economy, the outlook is, where, where things are heading. And what you've seen is, is that um, better better than expected growth uh, in 2019 for the banks, but you're also seeing some multiple expansion in the valuation because like we've talked about on residential mortgages, yeah. investors are becoming more and more comfortable with the risk the banks have that saying that, you know what, it's not as bad as what we were pricing in. We're willing to pay out for that because the banks do have solid growth. You may not see that in some other sectors. Interesting. Well, and yeah, and the CEO of Scotia yesterday basically saying he at least near term, he doesn't see a recession in Canada or the U.S., so maybe they feel comfortable on that front. John, good to get your perspective. I know you're busy. Get, get, get through all those bank earnings reports. John Aiken, Director of Canadian Financials at Barclays, joining us with his take on the financial services sector.